In today's episode, take suspicious persons to the front desk if they're not wearing a name badge? You bet. The party is on. Navy Corpsman vs. New Nurse. You don't want me to organize our documents? Cool, I won't do it then. So let's get started. Take suspicious persons to the front desk if they're not wearing a name badge? You bet. The party is on. This happened in the mid-90s when I was working for a software company. Said software company was a major provider of logistic management software for the trucking and shipping industry at the time. They were founded by two computer science college students in the 60s who were able to build the company into a multi-million dollar company. Both gentlemen were wonderful to work with and were still there when I started working for the company. One took the sales side and managed the sales slash marketing efforts, the other managed the software development teams. Together, they created a juggernaut of a software company. The gentleman who managed the software development team's official title was CEO, retired after putting in 25 years. We gave him a heartfelt send-off, with many of us being in tears at his departure that's how much we loved him. They hired a new CEO who didn't come from a software development background. Huge red flag he didn't understand the software development cycle. New CEO also regularly treated people poorly insulting them in meetings in front of their co-workers, berating them, setting unreasonable deadlines without consulting with the people who actually did the work to see if said deadline was even attainable. That's not how you motivate software developers who have high levels of skill and experience. All the developers needed to do is reach out to a headhunter, slang term for employment recruiter, Say I have X years of experience with major logistic management software company in order to get a better job with more money. Suffice it to say, I wasn't impressed. After experiencing the setting unreasonable deadlines issue in my project, which resulted in me calling our customers behind his back in order to negotiate a reasonable deadline something I was successful in doing that he never found out about I was looking for ways to pay back. New CEO started talking about how unsecure our facility was, and how we were in need of a new entrance security system in order to reduce the risk of corporate espionage. We all figured he meant a mag keycard with a gate. Something state-of-the-art for entrance security. But no. He was cheap. His idea of state-of-the-art security was giving us name badges. That's it. Not even a photo ID. Just a badge with our names on it. We were to wear them so that they were visible. He sent out an email stating that if we saw anyone throughout our campus without a name badge after a specific date, we were to treat them like they were a suspicious person. When we found someone without a name badge, we were to immediately escort them to the front desk. New CEO and high-level management had their offices in the front desk area, this is important later in this story. Trouble is, the entire rollout of the name badges was delayed due to production issues. Said deadline date came, and went about one-third of our employees didn't have a name badge yet. The new CEO had also not rescinded his original email order regarding taking suspicious persons without a name badge to the front desk. K Malicious Compliance After that deadline, I was walking to the snack area and met one of the software development managers without a name badge. I initially made the joke hey, Dave. You look like a suspicious person. We both laughed a bit he commented on how half-assed the whole name badge thing was and started walking back to his area of the campus. I was suddenly struck by an idea. I went back to him and said hey, Dave. You really are a suspicious person. I need to take you to the front office. At first, he balked. No really. I don't have time for this. I need to get back to work. I whispered, hey, Dave. Listen to me for a sec. Envision this, I take you to the front desk. You go into the lounge there. Take a smoke break, we had lounges for smokers and non-smokers. Drink a coke. Watch some TV. And all on company time. Heaven only knows how long you'll be there before someone notices you're gone. 
could be hours. Getting paid for doing nothing on company time. Dave's face lit up like a Christmas tree. You're right, he replied. I guess I am a suspicious person. You'd better escort me to the front office. So he reached out his arm to me, and arm in arm, we both walked to the front office where I left Dave to take a well-deserved extended break on company time. Dave was the perfect first person for me to do this with, because he was one of the software development managers. As I came across others without name badges, insisting that I needed to escort them to the front office, I told them, this a gag against the CEO. Dave's in on it. He's already there in the smoking lounge. As soon as others heard that Dave was in on the gag, they willingly complied and followed me to the front desk. I didn't stop until I'd hunted down about 50 coworkers and taken them to the front desk. We had a staff of around 250 employees. By the time I dropped off my last person, it was quite the party atmosphere in the front desk area. People laughing, joking, drinking soft drinks and eating snacks. It was getting really loud. I looked at this jolly scene and thought, my work here is done and went back to my desk. One hour goes by. Finally, the new CEO emerges from his office after hearing nearly two hours of this cacophony, angrily asking, what on earth are all of you doing here? Why aren't you working? They all replied, Bill Evans Trio fan said that we were suspicious persons because we didn't have our name badges, so she brought us here. New CEO apparently got flustered and said, well, go back to work. Crowd disperses. Sitting at my desk, I get a phone call from new CEO. Bill Evans Trio fan. Come to my office right now. Off I went to his office, taking a printed copy of his original email directive regarding people without name badges with me. I sat down in front of his desk and new CEO, looking extremely irritated, asked, what do you think you're doing? I calmly replied, I'm following your orders, sir, and handed him the email of his original name badge directives. In reading his own email, he immediately realized he couldn't do anything against me. He got even more flustered and sputtered, well, stop following my orders. I again calmly replied, sir, may I remind you that you ordered me to not follow your orders at a time that is most convenient for me to do so. His face looked like he was in brain lock and that he didn't know how to respond. Um, well, no, go back to work. I experienced no repercussions from that incident. There were other orchestrated incidents that followed, but they were behind-the-scenes practical jokes, not malicious compliance. I left a year later for greener work pastures. About six months after I left, the new CEO was forced to retire under threat of dismissal. Navy Corpsman vs. New Nurse 1990 I am a relatively new corpsman, medic, assigned to a surgery ward at the Naval Hospital. Our patients are all post-op and there are 60 beds. There are six or so corpsmen assigned to take care of these patients. As part of our duties we are to chart our findings and observations as we make our rounds. This surgery ward is usually a first assignment for corpsmen and nurses coming fresh from school. I joined the Navy at 21 yo so I'm a little more worldwide than my peers who are all 18 or 19. I know, especially in the military, there is the book way of doing things, and the effective way of doing things. We had volumes of manuals that covered every aspect of our jobs and duties that you could imagine. Cue the new nurse who has been assigned and wants to show how good she is at managing the lowly corpsman troops. She was merciless. Always looking for opportunities to embarrass or cause trouble for us. One evening I observed her shouting at one of the corpsmen for using an unapproved abbreviation in a patient's chart. What was the offensive abbreviation? ASAP he had written that the patient needed an evaluation ASAP. You would have thought that he had personally offended her honor. I went and looked in the approved abbreviations section of our operations manual to confirm that it was not there. It was not. 
I did find that there was a very extensive list of approved abbreviations available to use though. Q the MC. I pulled all of the corpsmen on the shift and told them to bring their charts to the break room. We then charted all of the notes together using nothing but approved abbreviations. The notes looked like another language. I made sure everyone could read their own notes and sent them out to put the charts back. Nurse Pain in the butt came in to review the notes with the corpsman. I take the first round. This is done while standing at the bedside of the patients. She opens the chart, looks at the note and says. Nurse, what is this? Me, I do not understand. What do you mean? Nurse, I do not understand anything you have written. Me, it says that the patient is recovering well with little difficulty, but will need further evaluation based on his comments and visible demonstration of discomfort and reduced mobility in his left upper limb. Nurse, that is not what it says. Me, ma'am, I assure you that it does and that those are all approved abbreviations. I am sorry that you do not know them. I do realize that you are new. I smile. She does not. This is the first of 60 charts she is to review. I have never seen Korsman so eager to review chart notes. We did go get the manual for her, just to be helpful. You don't want me to organize our documents? Cool, I won't do it then. This is something I remembered about my previous job, and I want to share it. I used to work as a legal assistant in a big electric energy company. They're owners of a lot of wind energy plants here in my country, and to say that they're a strong competitor in this market is an understatement at best. We initially used Microsoft SharePoint as a server for all of our functional systems and to save all of our documents, but the CEO decided to change it to the box system. The difference between them was so huge that it was shocking. I was usually in charge of saving all of our documents and data in the system, so when the change was announced, I expected orders coming from the legal counselor, the final boss of my department, obviously, to give me that direct order. During a team call via Teams, she started to talk about Box and how we must organize our stuff. Since a big part of them were the company's contracts, we needed everything in check. As ridiculous as this sounds, the legal department wasn't liked by at least five other departments. And truth be told, our document server was a mess. Each person had their own way to save stuff and nothing made sense. Even the legal counselor said it herself. Our server looked like some kid's room when they have a lot of fun and don't tidy up on the next second. Of course, this was extremely bad. As she mentioned the organization of the system, I immediately proposed to be the one to create a routine for us to save stuff, such as the archive naming, folder distribution, etc. The paralegal, she was great, also offered to help me, since the workload was immense. We practically would start from scratch and do our best without a basis. My direct boss, one of the legal analysts, immediately interrupted us and said she was going to do it. I told her she wouldn't have enough time, since she's mostly busy analyzing contracts and other incidents. She said for me not to worry, because I also had a truckload of things to do, and that I wouldn't do a great job anyway. Really? Fine, I won't do it then. Fast forward to a month, we were entering the archive transferring phase of the project. Every single department in the company must have their server organized, because they would do a direct transfer without any sort of checking. Guess what? Our server was still a freaking mess. And to top it all off, the VP came towards the legal counselor and ordered her to have everything organized in 48H. Yes, 48H to organize a completely complicated and messy server. In an emergency team call, she questioned my boss why nothing has been done regarding the server. My boss, trying to keep her own slate clean, threw me under the bus, saying that she shifted the responsibility to me. Luckily, the paralegal backed me up and saved me. She reminded us of the call where my boss strictly told me to not do anything, since I wouldn't do a good job. 
Despite the hassle, the counselor told me to stop everything I was previously doing and just organize our system. And so I did. I cleaned up the server in the allotted time, had to reorganize everything on my own, didn't eat, sleep. Just to make sure everything was in check. When the day came, the VP checked on us again and saw what I did. She said for the counselor to not let things go out this way again, and that I had done a miracle and a half for my department. Boy, what a day! If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.